We already got halfway through. You know, Ramona, that's your job. You're supposed to give me the little sign, like, you know what I'm saying, Ramona? Let me know I'm supposed to record. Um, so we're about to get this thing started, and uh, today's going to be a little bit different, so work with me. Okay, Agatha? Okay, work with me, Agatha. All right? It's going to be a little different, because um, we're going to get some, some, some uh, participation here going on, okay? What uh, I want to talk about is process, all right? Um, process. So I want you guys to start thinking about your process. What does your process look like when we find a property? Um, but I want to start off with this. Um, God is, is good, man. God has blessed me and allowed me to go and speak to schools and speak to kids, speak to our youth. Um, it's given me the opportunity, and I was blessed to go and speak at a high school today. Um, do you guys remember high school was kind of, for some, for some people, it was probably a little more awkward than others, um, right? Susie, how you doing, Susie? Not that it was awkward for you. You just happened to come in and happen to see you all. Um, so, um, you know, for some people, it's a little more awkward than others, right? It's okay. Um, so I went and spoke in front of all these students and, um, I stood in front of the class and I said, before I even get started, before I tell you anything about myself, um, I need somebody to stand up in front of everyone and I need them to tell me something about themselves. You got to tell me and everybody else about something about them. And, um, so course, what do you think happened? Crickets, right? Nobody wanted to volunteer, right? Which is kind of what I knew, right? So I said, listen, man, y'all can do whatever you want. Um, we're going to sit here all day for this whole session if somebody doesn't stand up, okay? And eventually, a young man to my left, he stood up. He told me his story, 30, 45 seconds. I said, boom, perfect, man. Thank you so much. Do you have cash out? He said, yep. Cash out them $100, right? Actually, I think I went, took it to the gave it to the teacher. So I gave him a hundred bucks. So I said, I need one more. I said, I need somebody else to do this. Guess what? Hands went up a little bit faster, right? Guy in the way in the back, he got up. He told me something about himself. I said, perfect, man. Awesome. Sent him 50 bucks, okay? By this time, hands are going up pretty quick. I say, hey, I need one more person, one more person. Guy stands up. He tells me, I'm afraid of frogs. I promise you, this is what he told his, that was his thing he was going to share, right? I said, I said, <laughs> I said, what? He said, yeah, I'm afraid of frogs. I said, why? He's like, I'm afraid of frogs. That's exactly how he said it. Like, pretty much, I'm afraid of frogs, pay me, right? <laughs> so I said, all right, that's awesome, man. You get nothing. Sit down. And my point, my point to, to doing all that and, and having them stand up and having them go through that is because there is a finite, there is a finite amount of time attached to every opportunity. Okay. Let me say that again. There is a definite amount of time attached to an opportunity. There is no opportunity that lasts forever except for heaven. All right. We got to make it there at first. So there's no other opportunity that lasts forever. So guys stand. You probably were in high school. It was a ladies' man, right? You had that lady that you were trying to holler at, and you 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 had to shoot your shot, Stan, right? There was an opportunity to shoot your shot. If you didn't shoot your shot, you was going to prom by yourself, right? So there's a time for everything, right? And if we miss our window of opportunity, that could be in our business. That can be five, ten, fifteen, twenty thousand dollars that we're missing out on. So we have to identify when those opportunities are there we have to strike when those opportunities are there but when we do that we need to do it with the process we can't just go ahead and do this willy-nilly do whatever we want um i'm gonna try this today and i'm gonna try that tomorrow um we have to have a process and so one of the things that has helped me uh tremendously is de uh, defining what my process is what am i good at and working with my strengths, allowing other people to surround me to help me with my weaknesses, okay? So we're going to go around. We're going to do like a little round robin. Like I said, it's going to be a little bit different today. We're going to have more and more people popping in, um, and that's fine. But we're going to kind of start, start, we're going to start with some people that have gotten a wholesale deal or two under their belt, okay? We're going to ask them real quick. And you don't have to go on some long tangent, but I want to know your process. You're driving for dollars, you're putting out bandit signs, you're cold calling, whatever your process is, I want you to tell me your process now and tell the group your process because there's somebody in this group today 
that hasn't gotten the deal and is struggling with the process. And it's good to hear someone who's struggling with the process. It's good to hear someone who just got a deal or has only maybe one or two deals into it, okay, that has a process that has worked for them. So I, I have a process, but my process, I spend a decent amount of money on my process, okay? I can tell you what my process was when I only had $300, okay? But it's also good to hear what some other people have to say. So let me see, show of hands real quick. Um, you can do the little virtual show of hand thing. Um, who's gotten, gotten a deal that's willing to talk about their process, their process. Somebody volunteer so we can get this thing. We can do this all day. Just, be just like them students, but I ain't paying you $100, all right? <laughs> all right, I kind of saw a couple of them go up at the same time. Um, I'm just gonna go from my screen. The top left is uh, right now um, is Logan. And uh, wanna lower your hand, Logan. Go ahead and talk about your process. Yusuf, I got you. Go ahead, um, after you, um, after, um, you're up, Yusuf, after Logan. What does your process look like? How do you go about finding the deal at first? That's the first thing I wanna know. Do you wanna know like now or my first deal? Let's rock, let's rock with, yeah, let's, let's do now. Let's do right now. Okay, right now, uh, my process is I do a lot of driving for dollars. Um, I also how much driving for dollars? Give me a give because I, I want to go into detail with this stuff right here. So the people who haven't gotten the deal, they know I go driving for dollars. I go driving for dollars for thirty minutes. I don't find nothing. I go home. Is that what it looks like, or what do you do? No, nah, I, I, I you clarify what driving for dollars is. Uh, Somebody's off on mute. Uh, let's all stay on mute so we can hear Logan. Go ahead, Logan. Uh, I follow your process. I get at least twenty five properties a week, and then those 25 properties, I take that and I have certain days written out on my whiteboard that I'll do cold calling. And then I also have a guy that I met that was a potential buyer that was going to pull out of his IRA, but he didn't end up going through. Uh, he's, he's very hustler mindset and he wanted to do some deals together. So uh, I'm about to have him start laying out bandit signs for me. And I told him 80, 20, would be the split. And then my main thing right now, Hold up. actually. Is he buying the bandit signs? Is he buying the bandit signs? No, I am. You're buying the bandit signs and you're doing 80-20 for him putting the bandit signs out? Right, because right now in Tulsa, um, like a month ago, it was super saturated with bandit signs, but I've just been watching the cycle, you know? Now I, I barely see bandit signs out anymore. So now that's when I know it's time to hop on it. Okay. And uh, my main thing right now is RVM, so ringless voicemails. Uh, I use REI Rail. Good. And I've been kind of testing the waters with uh, the list that I get. Um, let's see. I bought, I bought one list from, from some company that – like some small company that does it. And uh, it was actually a really – really good list i got like a 25 percent return rate on it okay and uh but i i'm what wanting I, to get i got 25 percent 25 calls back not not deals closed but okay. but I yeah list, man. i need that list <laughs> <laughs> but right now i'm actually looking into like the uh the ai lists like the artificial intelligence list you know um like the ones that are tracking people's Google searches. Um, okay, so, but, but, but for the context of this, and we can talk about that offline, but for the context of this, I just want to know what's your current process that you're actually implementing right now. Okay. You're driving for dollars, you're finding, you're doing exactly what I talked about in the course, finding 25 new properties every single uh, uh, week, right? So 100 properties every single month. Is that correct? Right. All right, process after that. After you find those, what's the very next thing? If you found your 25, what's the very next thing? How long does it take you to find 25? A day, two days? What does it take? No, I can do it in a day, like one evening, easy. Okay, so at the end of the evening, you've got 25 new properties. What's the very next thing that you're doing? <clears throat> um, typically, I would, you know, skip trace all of them one by one. Um, and then I cold call but I have it laid out on certain days on my calendar when I cold call. Good. And then, um, so 
after that, you know, uh, then I do my RVM drops and on REI rail, you can actually take the list that you dropped and export it to like, if people don't call you back, so you can continue to cold call. So I'm starting to implement that now is where I'm, uh, so I'm, go ahead, brother. Go ahead. Go ahead. My bad. Oh no, you're good. I'm taking that list and then I'm cold calling them myself one by one because that list is already skip traced. But, um, so yeah, uh, I guess, do you want me to continue on or what? Yeah. So after you, that you skip trace them, you have a certain day that you are calling, right? Right. Yeah. And so on those days, uh, what does that look like? What do you, what do you, how, are you calling all 25 for that week? What are we looking at? Yeah. I'll, I'll lay out like a certain number that I'm trying to hit. Like, and, and I've actually been doing the, uh, try to get in contact with at least 10 real human bodies. Okay. A night. And then, uh, I'm like losing my train of thought for some reason, but yeah. So it's all right. Uh, yeah, I try to get in contact with at least 10 people off of a certain list that I cold call. All right. And then you set the appointments. Right. Yep. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. So, um, let me see if I'm, uh, okay. We can help out here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna share my screen here. Give me one second, Ali. I got you, man. Don't forget to, uh, cause I'll forget. Let me just do this real quick. All right. So what he's talking about, he's going around driving for dollars. Everybody, you can see my screen, right? Logan, cause you're the only person I can see right now. Okay. Yeah. Um, so he's driving for dollars, whatever. And he gets a list. All right. And then in here, um, you know, you can do it from by picture or you can do it by, um, I'm sorry, but on the map or you can do it by picture. Right. And then he's going to come in here and I believe it is right here. So this is the, this is the, this is the normal view, right? Okay. Different properties. You can do it this way. You can do it map view, right? Different properties. Um, but, but, um, but we're going to go to settings here. We're going to go to settings and you can see here where it says export all deals, export addresses, export phone numbers, export emails. So if I export all deals, it's going to go up and uh, upload that stuff or download it, I should say. And I have to come here and open it up. And I'm just showing you this because maybe, I don't know, maybe because this is working for Logan. Logan, how many deals do you have in the contract? How many do I have under contract right now? Yeah, how many, how many were you working on at one point? You were working under contract there. Uh, let's see. I've got 12 under contract right now. So 12 under contract. So maybe this is something that you want to do, right? So here we are. Here's, here's the deals that are going um, into uh, from driving for dollars, right? As you can see, a whole bunch of different places, okay? What's going to happen, though, is you're going to eventually, this is obviously, this is mine. This is not Logan. He's in Oklahoma. But eventually, you're going to have to um, kind of stop it, export these, save them, and then start a new one. You can, cause it, it doesn't, it doesn't say, Hey, this is for to this day, that day, this is probably a couple just a couple weeks or stuff. So what I want you guys to do is listen to some of these people's processes on how they're doing. So he's saying real simple, really simple. I want to make this down, break this so easy that a fifth grader can make money doing this, right? This is not difficult. Okay. You can see it's working. Logan has 12 properties under contract right now because he's following a set system. This is the problem. We're not following the people. Most of us on this call are not following a system. I need you guys to make money. I need you guys to be successful. I need you to do it because Carla, I need to point my daughter and say, listen, Carla, right? Cause you know how it is, right? You know, if I tell her, she ain't gonna listen. If dad tells her, right? It's easier. It's easier. Ollie. If I can say to my little son and point it to Ollie and say, Ollie did it. Right. So I need you guys to do this. So we're going to follow a process. I don't know which one you want to do. He's doing driving for dollars and he has 12 deals under contract. That's pretty doggone good. So I appreciate that, Logan. Youssef, you're up, buddy. Where you at? Yeah. Hey, Tommy, can I add to that? Yeah, go ahead. Real quick. Go ahead. Uh, yeah. Like what he's saying is, is, is really true. Like if you keep yourself organized and follow a certain system, 
like it's going to work, but you have to, and I want to say something, there's, there's some like days and stuff, you know, where you, you're kind of dragging, but that's when I've, that's when I've gotten the most deals is when I made myself do it. So just a little bit of extra motivation for people. My numbers are simple, man. For every hundred properties, I'm gonna close th two to three of them. There you go. Really simple. So the quicker I can get to a hundred, I'm close two to three. And the quicker I get to 200, I'm gonna close four to six. I just keep, keep it just, it's, it's math. It, it doesn't, it doesn't really change. It's the same. So once you know your numbers, it's just how fast you can get to your numbers. Ali, you said you had a question real quick. Yeah, I had a question real quick for Logan. Logan, on your RVMs, are you um are you dropping those every day? I started doing RVMs myself, and I've been doing the same testing kind of thing, trying to figure it out. Um, had hits on one day, and then they disappear the next day. Are you doing it every day, or you got specific days you drop on? I have specific days. I have three days that I drop on uh, Monday, Tuesday, and Saturday, and I'll drop 150 per day. So depending on how big your list is, but that's just – what I do and it, it's had a pretty good success rate, but it will happen. It's kind of weird how you'll get flooded one day and then the next day you might only get, you know, four or five calls back, but. Right. Okay, cool. Dope. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. All right. Um, Logan, what's good? I'm not Logan. You said, I'm sorry, man. I'm tired. It's all good, man. What's up, man? What's up, brother? All right, so I'll just I'll rattle mine off super fast. Um, so yeah, start I, from where you, where you find them from, please. All right, all right. So I'm old school, you know, and I I find most of my leads from building relationships. I've got a city contact for code violations and tax delinquent properties, uh, okay. so I can go there once a week, pick up a big stack of them. If I have any questions, I'll flip through them really quick to ask some questions of what's going on with this. Is this chronic? You know, is this is something that's done every day and see. Most people will go after chronic, but one thing I know is if it's um, a property that's just been touched, nine times out of 10, it's not on anybody's radar. So okay. I'll go by and I'll start visiting those properties. Huh? I'm sorry? Hold on real quick, because I, I, you, you don't even realize you're, you're, you're spitting some good stuff here, okay? Yeah. So real quick, real quick. You said the very first thing is that you're old school, you do it by relationship, okay? Yes. What did we talk about earlier before class or group, family, we have this three parts of wholesaling. To be, have a wholesaling business, you have to have persistence, science, and art. The art is people, people building relationships. So you said, don't be stingy. Tell us <laughs> how, how you built these relationships. Where did you go to get these relationships? Come on, fam. I want to make so, money. All right. All right. So here's, what you, here's what you can do. You can go to almost any city sanitation division, and it varies from city to city, but you can find... Um, I'm trying to think of the department. It will be probably be the universal name of it, but whoever handles like the vegetation management, you can go okay. to them and just find out. So there are the code enforcement offices to ride around the city. And then there are the people who, there's a department who actually sends the guys out to cut like the vacant lots to remove trash and stuff like that. And they're okay. gonna have, Let's pause right there. So, so you guys so you get the picture of this, right? You see the guys that cut the grass that work for the city, right? That exactly. we kind of shy away from because they look, they, they, they've been out in the sun, they're sweaty, they're dirty, <laughs> they're picking up trash, and you don't want to talk to them, right? <laughs> yeah, those are my you, best friends, though. Those you are the ones you them. want to talk to. Because yeah. so code enforcement, a lot of times in cities, code enforcement can't, can't give you the list or won't give you the list, mm -hmm. right? That's right. The guys that are out actually riding around in the, in the, in the cars with the city emblems on it, you know, they're the guys that are, that are enforcing or putting the signs out and writing them up, but they have to pass that along to another department. You Those said, are the, yeah. Why you ain't tell me this, brother? You've been keeping secret. <laughs> you knew this already. <laughs> you knew this already, <laughs> man. So, uh, hold on, Yusef. I think you muted yourself by accident. Sorry. Hey. So yeah, um, the guys that are actually getting their hands dirty, that's going to be a separate department. The guys that do the code enforcement, they're not going to be the ones out doing the actual work. They've got to write the order up and they've got to pass it along to another department. Well, that department just has a stack of papers, work orders. Sometimes they'll contract guys to go out and cut these vacant lots and these vacant houses. And um, it'll be private contractors in the community. Well, they have to have physical pieces of paper to do that with. And they just pile up and pile up and pile up. Well, you go make a friend in that department and say, hey, look, you know, you send these work orders out. Can I get a copy? Or do you have them on a master list? 
you know, mm -hmm. can I come by once a, a week to get them, you know? They're probably gonna just throw them out or throw, put them in the recycle bin anyway. So am I going too fast? No, nah, you're doing good, man. You're good. Okay, okay. So that, that's one way that I do it. And so when I get those, what I'll do is, because I know my zip codes, I'll go through and say, oh, 27106, yeah, I know that's a hot area. Let me go. And that goes back to looking at the list source trick that you can use to see yeah. where your buyers are buying. Yep. And so you want to match that up. And pretty soon you'll get good enough to know um, which, which you'll look at the, the, uh, the invoices and stuff, uh, the code violations, and you'll be able to see which workers work in which areas. And you just start going, you just segment their reports and say, well, the, I know this is the west side of town. I know this is hot. I'm physically going to look at all these properties. And guess what? They're going to get a call today. And, you know, and uh, my process with that is I'll send out a yellow letter. Well, first, I put all those properties into uh, a CRM system. I use REI Pro, and I put okay. them all in there, you know, manually. Nice. So, nice. That's old school, I know, but. Hey, yeah. hey, I don't care what it is. It's a process that's working for you. You're getting deals yes. done. So maybe, maybe someone on this call is not that very computer literate, right? Right. And so maybe doing it the manual way um, is the best way for them, right? Because yeah, yeah. it's all about, I want, it's all about you making money the way you make money, right? Exactly. So exactly. if you're trying to do it the way I do it and it's not working for you and you're making no money, then I'm not doing my job as a coach, right? Exactly. So this is why we're talking about this, to give people different perspectives um, and opportunities. So exactly. um, let me, I keep forgetting. My screen real quick. I just want to get set up. All right, so we're going to talk about, um, um, he's saying he can find where the list source trick, right? Of how to find where people are buying at. Okay, guys, we just got to think about this from a different lens, right? I, you know, I love I love free stuff, right? I started with just three hundred bucks, so I needed to know I I couldn't spend a whole bunch of money, right? And even though the list source trick is kind of is is free, I didn't even really know about list source when I first started, so I had to kind of just think through the problem. So um, for those of you who want to think through the problem with me. Man, Zoom, I mean, Zoom, Zillow is ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous, right? There's so many different little tricks. I wish, like, I, I, would, I need, really need to just kind of create a whole course just on Zillow, okay? And all the things we can learn and do from Zillow, all the things that Zillow can teach you. So let's, let's, just, let's just, 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 just ride with me for a little bit, okay? So on Zillow, we're talking about, um, um, he's talking about where is everybody buying it, right? So... Um, investors, you know, again, knowing your market, right? What do we say? Under $50,000, Bank of America is not giving you a mortgage. It's not worth their time. They're not making enough money on interest. What I'm doing is bringing this thing from minimum to 50,000. I also know that, I also know that the average American is broke. The average American does not have um, $1,000 in their account. That's the average American um, does not have $100 in their account. So, what that means is if someone is buying properties under 50,000, most likely they're either hard money or they have the cash, okay? So if you know that, if you know that about America, if you know that about society, you know a couple of little tricks, all I'm doing is just taking my, my time frame down to about, so within the last 90 days, and I can see if you wanna do six months, you can do six months too. And you can see the yellow dots, right? Yellow dots mean sold. Take all these off and only use the yellow dots. Only use the last, so the sold. So what I'm asking Zillow to do is to only show me properties that have sold within the not last 90 days or less for under $50,000. Meaning that if so, whoever bought this house right here for $34,500, um, $34,500 on July 26th, that's my daughter's birthday, on July 26, 2019, so just last month, not even a month ago, whoever bought this property had to have $34,500 cash or use hard money. Because Bank America is saying, bro, we're not giving you a mortgage for $34,500. We're making no money off of this. I'd rather, they, they, we'd rather use our $34,500 and apply it to another uh, loan, okay? So this house, this person right here, this, this is how easy we can find buyers, right? This is how easy we can find the neighborhoods that are going on or, or that are the things that are going on. This right here, guess what? This person just bought this property, okay? I bet you, I bet you, when I go, next time I take a trip out to Augusta, I'm gonna go by 3424 Jonathan Circle and I bet you I'm gonna see a green dumpster right here and I bet you I'm gonna see P. 
people renovating this property. And you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna park my truck right here. I'm gonna walk right in that house and say, listen, give me them names. I need them names, family. I need names and numbers of who bought this because when you're done flipping this one, I need to put you on my buyers list. So I get the next one. Okay? Sorry, Yusef, but that was a good tip, man. So go ahead. So from there, what are we doing there? From, from there, Yusef. Okay. Uh, so, like I said, you know, I, I visit properties in those, uh, those zip codes. I physically want to put my eyes on them because I have plans on going to contact them immediately if possible. So I'll okay. skip trace if using um, been verified or I'll skip, try to do a free skip trace through REI Pro. Well, technically it's not free because you're paying, you're paying for REI Pro, but yeah. or any, any method that you have will work. Um, so then if I can speak to someone, of course, I'll set up an appointment. Uh, but I also wanted to say this, what's important about these properties is when you hear people talk about list stacking, you've got three levels of motivation when you mm -hmm. look at these properties. You've got somebody that's probably got a ton of sanitation liens on their property. That's one. You've got an absentee owner and a vacant property. That's two, right? Yep. Then you have a distressed property. So that's three. Mm. You know, that's three levels of motivation right there. You don't even have to go too, too deep into thinking on whether or not they're motivated sellers. I already know they got to be motivated. It's got to be. Capacity. Yep. You know, so that's my thinking on that. Uh, now, this is only one branch of the whole tree. Uh, there's another process I use for other types of properties, like abandoned properties or absentee owner properties that aren't in a distressed condition. But I'll just go, I'll go down this rabbit hole real quick. So then um, I'll hit the, the rest of the list once I get it in um, REI Pro with uh, maybe postcards or I'll go over the yellow, yellow letter HQ. Um, I've been working with testing a couple of letters over there and I've been getting pretty decent response with the yellow letter HQ um, letters over there. Um, and, and I'll skip trace them. Um, maybe RVM them after that. Just depends on kind of what response I'm getting. And uh, when they call back, I set the appointment. Oh, and another key important thing with those properties that I go and look at in those great neighborhoods <clears throat> are either you know, older neighborhoods, but settle. I like those too, because I can go knock on the neighbor's door. I always mm -hmm. try to build re relationships with the neighbors because oh. they, they've helped me with so many deals. They'll help walk you through and I always pay them. You know, I always pay them after they help me and we close. I always bring something back to them just as a token of thanks. And that's, nine that's times true. out of 10, they'll wind up telling you about another property in the neighborhood. Oh yeah. Listen guys, if yeah. you're not looking at the door talking to Edna and Margaret, yeah, and Ernest, you know what I'm saying? If you ain't talking to neighbors like that, because they know everything. Like it, if yes. the house across the street from my mother's house, if someone knocked on Mary Holt's door, Mary gonna keep you there for a good right. 45, right. 45 right. minutes. You are gonna be there. She gonna preach to you. You might give you good food, right? But she, you gonna know about everything in the neighborhood. You talk yeah. to Mary. So man, if you guys aren't doing that, don't be afraid to get out of the car. Right? Don't be don't be afraid to get out of the car. I, I did a one on one session in South Carolina. I don't see uh, I don't know if I see Mike mics in here. I guess I think we got a couple mics. I don't know which mic this is. It was in here, but um, Mike couldn't be with us. His wife uh, Sherry was there, and um, we saw a house and pulled over immediately. I was working on it. I was working on it. Pulled over immediately. Hopped out the truck. Started to get into conversation, found out information about that property that we wouldn't have found out before any other way. We found out that the owner of that property is not really a fix and flip owner. They bought that property, they were going to give it to their daughter, and I guess something going on with the daughter, and then it's like, you know what, we're just going to fix it up and sell it. And they also had a couple other properties. Okay, Sherry's right here. Okay. Got you, got you. So Sherry's here, so she knows, right? <clears throat> she can vouch for me. We got out of that truck and we went and spoke to them. Don't be afraid to do that. The information that you're going to find from these people. I did this in LA the same way. Guy was on the roof, for working on a roof, started talking to him. He told me how much, number one, we, I didn't know what, how much roofing was in LA, so I wanted to figure out what that was. It's ridiculously expensive. Here in Georgia, it's like $281, eighty dollars a square, right, for a decent contracted roof with, with insurance. There, it's like $800 a square. It's, it's crazy, it's crazy. But... It's good because now we know what the price for roofing is there. Plus, he said, man, the guy who bought this house owns three, one, three other ones, and he's just waiting for me to finish here so I go over there. So we added that person to our buyers list. 
get out of your truck, knock on the doors, okay? Closed mouths don't get fed. It's okay. They're not most, I've never gone to a, um, a property like a, with a contractor or a, uh, a homeowner who right next door across the street is an abandoned, ugly home dragging down their property value. I've never gone to one of those doors and they were pissed off at me. It could happen, but it's just never happened to me. And I've gone to a lot of doors, right? So make sure that we're taking advantage of that. Yusuf is giving you guys some jewels here. Um, I think he doesn't realize how good of the jewels he's giving you, but it's working for him. He's getting deals done. He's getting paid. He's getting cash and checks, all right? Yusuf, is over, he, don't, he takes bags of money right now, right? Tommy, <laughs> so, can I ask Yusuf a question? Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead and ask Yusuf a question, Sue. Okay. Um, Yusuf, you said that there were three motivations. Uh, they have a sanitation issue. It might be an absentee owner. I think I missed one. And also, maybe I'm not that far in the program yet, but what is this yellow letter that you spoke of? Hey, Tommy, you, you want to? Uh, well, it's yeah. called yellow, yellowletterhq.com. Uh, and it's where you can, um, you can go and um, get yellow letters sent out. You just have to uh, put them on a, a spreadsheet in a CSV format and upload them into their system. It's really for bulk. Uh, bulk direct mail sending and it looks like it's hand letter written like handwritten format font you can you can choose several different fonts and formats of the letters but i believe in testing they've got different colored envelopes you know and you know you can do an array of things there you know um, from the envelope to the type of font that you use and uh it's supposed to kind of um be a pattern disrupt i guess you know people are looking at white envelopes all day and they get to that they get get that particular type of blue yellow or red pink envelope and they open it and there's a what appears to be a handwritten letter on a yellow legal type piece of paper uh they're more apt to read it i hope i explained that correctly yep yeah. no you did okay. thank you thank you okay. yep. right. and so um so that's that's obviously a paid service right um understanding that when we do um letters when we do mail outs it's numbers you ain't gonna get a deal you probably are not going to get a deal if you send out 20 postcards okay just understand you have to you have to send out hundreds and sometimes thousands okay but this is ede right this is employee to entrepreneur right and so um what, what he's saying is is really true right but if we're going to use um yellow letters if we're going to use any any type of mailing we need to understand that there is um there's some risk involved just like this is all tying into what i first opened up with when i was talking about those students um and having a finite amount of time to actually take advantage of something there's a risk right those students stood up they took a risk that their buddies were going to ridicule them and laugh at them but because they took a risk, the first guy took a risk and made a hundred bucks. The second person took a risk and made 50 bucks. The person who waited last made zero, right? Money like speed. Remember, remember that money like speed. I've lost a lot of deals because I waited a week. I waited a couple of days and I lost the deal. So if you're going to do um, letters, if you're going to do deal machine, uh, yellow letter, um, I do deal machine. I like the deal machine just because of the, of, taking a picture, it's kind of like a pattern disrupt, right? You say, you see the picture of your house, you're like, who the heck, who, who took a picture of my house and sent it to me, right? It, want, it makes you read my letter. It's the same reason why in the beginning, when I was broke and I didn't have, I couldn't afford to do that, I would go to um, Staples or Walmart in the, the sales section of the stationery, I would take anything. I didn't care if it was Hanukkah cards and it was in the middle of July, I don't care, right? I took something that was a pattern disrupt. What works really well is congratulations cards or wedding invitation cards. You get a wedding invitation card, you can be like, who the heck is getting married? And didn't tell me over the phone and just sent it to me. And then you open it up and it's, hey, how you doing? My name is Tommy, I'm a local real estate investor. And I saw your property on 123 Main Street and we're just interested in seeing if you're looking to, per to sell that property with my, my number at the bottom. Right? It's a pattern, like, it's a, they're gonna look at it. When you see a wedding invitation, you're gonna open that thing up, right? So um, that's all I'm looking for. I just need to grab their attention. If you, ever, if you guys watched uh, my webinar, right, what did I do? I start off, I did it 
I didn't just make it up. I started off running, right? I said, are you ready for this? You ready for anything? And I took off running, right? So it's like, why is this dude running? Who is he running from? What is, what's going on? It makes you want to watch. That's all you're trying to do is you're just trying to grab attention really quick. But you got to spend some money to do that. All right? So if you're thinking about doing letters, uh, understand that you have to, you're going you're gonna to spend, you're probably going to spend, I'll just be honest with you, you're probably going to spend well over a grand. Okay? But if you get one deal that's for 10000 and you had to spend $2,000 in letters, is it worth it? Yeah, everybody on this, if everybody on this, everybody on this call, if I took $10,000, I wrapped it up, shrink wrapped it, put it into a safe with a time release on it and said, listen, in 30, 60 days, this thing is going to pop open. All you got to do is give me $2,000 for these yellow letters. Everybody on this call would do it, right? It's going to pop. You're just like, man, I'm going to do it. The reason why you don't do it is because you don't believe it's going to work. So this really has to, you have to do a gut check and say, am I really an entrepreneur? And so if you ever looked up the definition of an entrepreneur, it says a person who organizes and operates a business or businesses taking on greater than normal financial risk in order to do so. Does it say take on risk? It says greater than normal financial risk in order to do so. When I started my gym, I started with $55,000 in build out and cost. I took on greater risk because I definitely didn't have, I wasn't rich to hire people, to, to um, have people train at $100 a month at first, $55,000 for $100 per person. But I did that with a plan. And this is why we're talking about this process during this call. I did that with a plan in mind to make my money back. If you guys are doing this without a plan, you're losing, right? So we're talking about this now because I want you guys to come up with a plan. Logan, you got your hand up? Logan, there you go. Yeah, hey, what's up, man? Uh, I kind of wanted to, to just add something, uh, if that's all right. Yep. Um, just literally going off of what you were saying, like when you are, you know, ready to take that step, which you should, to take a risk and spend money, um, I think in my opinion, like you guys should be watching in your markets what uh, what the wholesale cycle is. Like how I was saying, you know, a month ago, there was a hundred bandit signs every freaking street. Now I think I've seen like two in the last couple of days. So now I'm about to hit bandit signs. And, and you can do that by just talking to other wholesalers in your market and say, you know, like, what are you doing? How are you marketing? And literally everybody in my market right now is doing direct mail and cold calling and mm. and uh i don't send direct mail because i know that every freaking landlord has a stack of ten thousand postcards yeah that they're just gonna throw away anyways and nobody's doing rvms in tulsa and and it's working right now and and i also i forgot to say i'm doing facebook ads too as well that's that's definitely a part of my process nice i'm trying to get more creative um and all that with facebook ads i'm about to level up on those for sure but that's, that's a whole course. I, we've done that before. Um, I think it's probably a good time for us to go back into Facebook ads. It's been a little bit of time um, to show you guys uh, the ins and outs of Facebook. I might try to still bring on um, either Napoleon or Boniface um, to, to walk you guys through Facebook ads. If it's something that you guys want to learn about Facebook ads, I can definitely go over um, an overview, show you, um, um, you know what I'm doing, but I, re I really think probably the best bet is to bring one of those guys on, um, and show and let them kind of show you, like, give you an overall picture. They're not going to be able to teach it to you because, like, you're not going to know it at the end of it, but it's good that you're exposed to it so you can start putting the pieces together, right? There's a whole bunch of little like buttons you got to toggle on, and, to and just doing that within an hour, hour and a half is impossible, right? But to get the exposure of it, um, I think is great. And I think the beautiful thing about being in our, in our, our little family here, a beautiful thing about this is that we can practice. You guys are in the private Facebook page or should be, we can practice the beautiful thing called group economics. God bless it. All right. Group economics works. Okay. If you work with people who work group op group, group, Economics works, okay? It's a tongue twister. 
all right? If you work with people who work, group economics works. If you work with somebody in your chain, some link in that chain who's lazy and wants to do less than everybody else, it starts to fall apart. But if you get with a group of like-minded individuals, like I hope we are on this call, um, and you guys come up with a plan, you can put some things together because because Logan, Logan can, can vouch for it. Logan, Facebook marketing is not cheap, right? Uh, no, it's not. It's not cheap. It could be cheap if you're going to spend a little bit amount of money on, on it, but you're not going to get the results. Right. You probably need to be at, I, st I started off at $25 a day. I'm now doing Facebook marketing at $150 a day, which is over $3,000 a month. Oh, it's over, I'm sorry, it's over um, $4,500 a month. Excuse me. And Facebook marketing, right? And my goal, my goal is to spend $250 a day. I would love, nothing else would make me happier to spend $250 a day on Facebook marketing. Because if I'm doing that, I'm not doing that just for any reason. I'm doing it because I have narrowed in on my niche and I know that for every dollar that goes out, two or three or 10 come back, all right? So that's how you start off. You start off with a smaller amount to kind of get the fundamentals who's watching my ads, who's doing this, who's interacting, all right? Who, how am I getting on these appointments? Are these appointments closing? Then I start to kind of narrow in on the type of person who watches the ads and closes. And then I could just, it's just, it's just a matter of how fast can I spend the money? How fast can I spend the money to get in front of the next person? All right? Hey, so. Uh, Tommy. Yes, sir. Whenever you do that Facebook ad thing, uh, actually, Billy Gina's marketing was one of the speakers last yeah. week. So I'll send you everything. I wrote down literally everything. So yeah, I was it. I was in Billy Jean's course. I was in Bonif. I took a. I'll tell you, I've taken. Oh, really? Yeah, I've taken a couple. Man, I, I spend money on, on learning, bro. Yeah, he's awesome, man. There's, I mean, he's I'm really about to level up on these ads. He is an animal, guys. Um, Logan knows this. Other people know this. You've heard me say this before. We are not in the real estate game. We are in the marketing game. We just happen to market real estate. So if you're not uh, spending time learning how to market, you will not be in business. I am going to out business you. I am going to out market you because you don't, you're choosing. Cause I'm telling you here today is the 21st of August, 2019. You need to get on and learn how to market. Stop watching YouTube videos on how to wholesale. Start watching YouTube videos on how to market. Okay. You know, you don't need anything else besides this course to learn how to wholesale. You can, you're going to learn other tactics that aren't in this course, but in order for you to make money, you got everything you need in this course. Stop watching YouTube videos on how to wholesale. Do, do what you're, you've been shown how to do and start leveling up on how to market. All right. Because that's where it's going. It, the reason why, the reason why um, we can um, spend $150 a day is the reason why I can do that is because I started off with $10 a day and I went from $10 a day to 20 to $25 a day then to $50 a day. And I'm able to do that because I do it. I get a result. I don't go out and buy a Maserati. I don't go out and, and buy Gucci belts, Fendi headbands. I don't know what the heck you need a Fendi headband for anyway, but I don't do none of that stuff. I take that money and I reinvest it back into my business. And one day somebody's going to look at me like, Hey, Tommy doing it. I, I, man, I, I, he been driving that, that yellow FJ for a long time. Now he just jumped levels because I'm not worried about that. Right. I'm worried about when this market crash in 2020, I'm going to go broke spending as much money as I possibly can trying to buy up everything. Right. Because I'm looking long-term, but you got to start doing that stuff. Now that process has to start here. You can't wait. All right. All right. All right, we're going to open this thing up for some Q&A real quick. Appreciate you both for um, letting other people know what y'all doing in your business and in your market. Um, let's get, uh, can we at least get to use Maserati? We can get, you know, I, I, I don't, you know, I like Maseratis, but I think I'm going to go with something a little different, but we're going we're gonna to rock with something. I'm going to stunt a little bit, just a little bit, just a little bit. Um, all right, Lenny, what's up, family? Oh, am I on? Am I on? Can you hear me? Yeah, I got you now, brother. All right, Tommy. So I got a question. I I got uh, like my first call today from uh, 
my um, letters that I sent out on Deal Machine. That's what I'm talking about. Let's go. And um, the problem was, first of all, I didn't have like my information with me while because I was actually driving for dollars when they called. Okay. And um, the, the the problem was I could never get the guy to tell me any information about the house. He was like, "Hey, you called." I said, he, he, "I got this letter. This, this is how the conversation goes." I said, "Hey, this is Leo." He said, "Hey, this is um." A, a guy here, you call, uh, I got your letter saying that you wanted to purchase uh, my property. How much you How much you want to buy it for? Mm, okay. So uh, I was like, you know, my it kind of kind of caught me off guard because I was like, you know, I didn't know where to go to from there. Probably, you know, with experience, it would probably change. But you know, that was you know the conference. Then I was like, um, so yeah, I, I'm interested in buying. You know, gave him the whole spill about. Uh, you know, being a real estate investor in the area, you know, that kind of thing. And um, it never went any further, pretty much never went any further than that. You know, he was like, so are you, are you, are you do you really want to buy it now? It's like, yeah, I, I want to buy it now, you know, but I, I was like, but I don't have any information in front of me. Can I get your address? Can I get the address? You know what I mean? So I kind of want to know what do you do or, or what's the process in those situations when people Perfect. call you like, Perfect, perfect. We're, we're going to run into that a lot. I ran into that like right before this phone call came on because I have a virtual assistant who's working right now. She should be working until eight o'clock um, who's calling on my behalf and leaving voicemail messages and people are calling my phone. That's why I keep reaching over here. To look at my phone. Um, so it's going to happen. Right. And so this is very simple. Right. You can't say, guys, make sure you pay attention to this. You can't say the wrong thing to the right person. All right. You can't say the wrong thing to the right person. If someone is really looking to sell their property, right? And this is how you can kind of qualify. And I want you to keep this in your mind. You are in control, Lenny, not them. Okay. They have the problem, not you. Okay. You are the problem solver. You're the doctor, they're the patient. Okay. Sometimes some patients are jerks and they come into the ER thinking they run it, right? They think that they, they're owning the, owning the deal, right? They don't. Okay. I promise you, this is, this is, I'm telling you, this is, this is what happens, right? So you need to take control of it and say, listen, um, I'm going to act like you're the guy, right? Hey, Lenny, I would love to be able to uh, give you an offer right now. I really would. But here's the problem, Lenny. I'm actually um, looking at another property right now that I'm looking to purchase, okay? And um, I like this one. I really want to get back to yours but I really don't know what property is yours. I'm out in the field right now. If you can give me some information, then I can get back to you and get you a fair deal. Is that fair enough? So notice what I'm asking him, all right? I'm, I've completely switched it. I've asked him if I can get him a fair deal. Is that fair enough? I didn't ask him, can I call him back? I didn't ask him that. I said, can I get you a fair deal? Is that fair enough? Of course it's fair enough. Who doesn't want a fair deal? All right, cool. I got your number, Lenny. What I'm going to do is when I get back, I'm going to call. I'm, I'll call you. I want to get some time. I want to get back to my office, whatever you want to say. I'll give you a quick phone call and we can talk about your offer. Do me a favor. Can you just uh, shoot me the address real quick or let me write down the address real quick so I can just really briefly run through it so I don't have to go do a whole bunch of work looking for it and I can get you that offer as quickly as possible. you mind doing that for me, Lenny? Perfect. All right, thank you. And we hang up, okay? So really, really simple. It's how you deliver it, right? And this is going to happen over and over again. And eventually you'll get smoother with it and smoother with it. And it'll just be like, okay, I already know this one. You'll be sitting there like this. Yeah, okay. All right, okay. And you'll just be able to know exactly where to go with it, all right? Um, what's your process look like, though? What's your process look like? Is your, when you skip, when you send these things out, so right now that person who just called me, the reason why I'm not sweating it, because there was a number attached to it. All I'm going to do is going to take that number. I think I've showed this before on the class. There's a list in Clayton County that right now my VA in the Philippines is calling. And all I'm gonna do is gonna take that five, three number, one number, whatever that was, I'm gonna put it into my Excel spreadsheet. It's gonna match it up with the property that is attached to it. So I don't even have to ask them for their address, right? Because I just use the number that's attached to that property because I know that number is attached to the property because they got the call or they got the letter. You understand? Uh -huh. So is your process similar to that? No, it's not. Okay. So you, in that case, you really do need to get this person's information. And so um, what you're going to have to do is you're going to either, you start off with the smooth, like just easy going. 
And if they don't want to give you the phone number and say, you just tell them, this is straight. Hey, Lenny, um, you know, I really can't help you if I don't have the, the address, right? And he's like, well, you, you don't want to send me the mail. Yeah, I understand that, but I'm a local, I'm a, I'm a real estate investor, Lenny. Like I send a lot of people mail because I buy a lot of houses and the people I work with, we buy a lot of houses. Now, if you want me to give you a fair deal on your house, all I'm asking for is the address. If you don't, that's fine. I'm not the right investor for you. Have a good day. Because they're going to be a jerk anyway. They're going to be a problem anyway. You've, you've, done, you've gone the smooth route. You've gone the easy, easy route. Now it's time for you to say, listen, I'm not the right one for you. What are you doing? You're backing away from it. They're saying, hold up, hold up. They called you, right? So they want to sell their house. Now you're telling them, no, if you can't give me the address, like it's just the address. Like what's the big deal? It's just the address. But if you don't want to sell it, cool. If you don't want a fair deal, if you don't want someone, that want, if you don't want someone who's going to treat you with honor and dignity and respect and give you a fair deal, that's fine. Then um, I'm cool with that and just have a nice day, because they're going to they're going to waste your time. That makes sense. Yep. All right, and your time is valuable. I don't know what your how much your time costs. Mine's is a thousand dollars an hour right now, for right now. Okay, so I don't know what you feel like you're worth. That's a, that's a question you got to ask yourself. Cool. Cool. All right, my man Matt, brand new, brand new. Hey, everybody, we uh, Matt, you didn't know this, but we haze here, family. We haze people. No, I'm just playing. You're good, man. You all in front of you. You you were you were family now. Let me take you off, take you off of mute. Try to take you off mute. Maybe you can take yourself off mute. I don't know. You might I got on mute. Okay, there you go. There you go. You hear me? We we good now. What's good, man? So man, how you guys doing? Hello, everybody. I'm Matt, nice to meet you. What's up? Nice to meet you too, bro. Yeah, my bad. I'm at work right now. If it's loud, but that's all right. We're gonna um, change that. We're gonna change that. Real quick, I have a question. Um, remember when we talked? I had a deal on a table a few months ago that uh, I kind of left alone for a while, okay. and it was a deal that I got to my father. Um, we sat down. We talked about it. Uh, we met up with the with the gentleman. Uh, he had a home uh, through probate, and it was getting um, it was going through the pre foreclosure stages. Hold about four or five thousand in back taxes. Um, and uh, the gentleman didn't have the best lifestyle either, you know, uh, so he can't really afford much. Uh, beautiful home. I, ARV really worked out uh, from what I did, from all the numbers I put in. Um, we got to the point where I made sure that he was on, on the wheel for the probate, all that stuff. Um, and again, I got the lead through my dad. Uh, me and him had a, me and my dad had a disagreement, a family issue where we didn't talk for like two, three months. It was okay. like early June, late May. Yeah. Um, uh -huh. And then uh, I spoke to my dad a few weeks ago, uh, well, not even a few weeks ago, last week, um, maybe the day after our phone call. Uh, and just to get a follow-up about, about this guy, because it's it still lead. I mean, he has six months before the foreclosure. Um, you know, let's hop on it, you know? Yeah. Um, and, he, and my dad approached me, and he was telling me that uh, he actually went on the side while we weren't talking. He pulled up, a, 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 I guess he had a best of friend as well. And they approached the gentleman. Um, the gentleman did agree. Uh, I don't know what, what they're trying to do, whether it will be a um, subject to or wholesale. I don't know what they were doing because I, I, I mean, my dad doesn't know too much about it. And that's not the point. Point is that uh, when they were trying to get him to sign the paperwork finally or whatever they were trying to do, he, he backed off. Uh, the gentleman, I remember him saying when we went for our, our meeting for the property, he said, uh, he said, you know, it's my family home. I don't want to give it up. You know, I want some way that I can stay at the property, maybe, you know, or be a tenant or something like that. At the property, you know, of course, it's, it's he it, that won't be able to that won't be a possibility. He doesn't have a good lifestyle, you know. He can't keep up with the bills as is. So he wouldn't be able to stay there, you know. Um, so I don't see it as anything but a, a wholesale. Uh, but my my point is that they uh he backed out the deal. Uh, he had an argument um with uh, the other the other uh, investor and my father. You know, they went back and forth yelling at each other like, you know, the guy felt like he was being um haggled or finagled out the property. Um, I wasn't there. I don't know what happened. So now I'm in position like, okay, well, this property is still there. I would like to approach it. I'm just trying to figure out a proper way to approach it. I, I, today I sent them uh, um, uh, something through a uh, deal machine, just a little postcard through deal machine. Um, I met him once. I don't, honestly don't know if he remembers me. So, um, so but, let, me, let, me, let me ask you this. So the guy's still there. Guys, listen to this. Yeah. So listen to what he just said, right? So we have to understand. Um, we have to... Oh, is, oh, is that your radio? Okay. Um, that's your radio, right? Yeah, that's yeah. okay, mine. Okay, cool. So we have to um, practice, practice, always practice um, active listening, right? So active listening. So what I heard 
is a gentleman that's in a house who's getting ready to lose it, who can't afford to keep it, is going to lose it anyway, but he doesn't want to get out of his house. It's a family property, and he ha he wants to stay in there, all right? So this is why it's so important that we are not just considering ourselves wholesalers, okay? So what I would do, Matt, is I would give him, I would give him two options, right? The first option is the wholesale option, which you kind of know he's going to kind of already balk at, right? But he might jump on it the closer he gets to the point where he's getting ready to get evicted. So you want to at least lay that option out. But you want to tell them up front that I'm going to give you two options. Because if you just say, hey, we can start wholesaling, I'm going wholesaling mode, right, without saying wholesaling. As soon as you start to go into that, he might just turn off his ears, turn off his mind, stop listening to you. So you want to tell him, hey, I'm going to give you two options. Two options, okay? People like options. They don't like choices, right? People like options. They don't like choices. Let me give you two options. First one is the wholesaling route. The second one is something that we call a seller buyback or a seller leaseback, okay? So this is where an investor like myself will partner with another investor, wholesaling, right? We'll partner with another investor and we will purchase the property from you and you will have first right ref of refusal to stay within the property yourself. So you don't have to move. You don't have to do anything. You don't, like, you don't, we're not, we're, we're, we don't have to worry about moving stuff. We don't have to worry about cleaning nothing out, right? You're going to stay in the property and you're going to make monthly payments to me and my partner or my partner, okay? So your partner gets to get a property, hopefully at a good rate. This guy is going to lease it back to them. So they're going to rent it back to him. He's already, is he paying the mortgage? Is the, is the mortgage paid off on that? I can't remember if you said that or not. Uh, they owe about 49000 on the mortgage. Honestly, man, this guy is kind of crazy. He gave me all his paperwork. He, he gave me copies of his will. He gave me a whole bunch of stuff. Okay. Um, so, so he owed about 49000 and about four. What's... Uh, Matt, I think we are, we're losing you, man. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I think you walked into a building or something. We can't really hear you. Uh, I heard right. what was the last thing you heard? 49,000. 49,000 in mortgage left. Um, and uh, about four, four or 5,000 in our backpack. What, uh, but what's, the, the what's the monthly? What's the monthly? What's the monthly payment? Oh, the monthly? I'm not, I'm not 100% sure. So I'm gonna need you to find the monthly payment and I'll need you to find what the going rate for rent is in that neighborhood, okay? Okay. So you see how guys, because, because, because there's so many situations that I've either seen or been a part of, we can start solving problems that other wholesalers are not gonna be able to solve, right? So other wholesalers say, oh, I can't, I wanna wholesale it. Oh, I can't wholesale it. Okay, let me move on to the next one. And you lose that deal. Here's a guy, here's a guy who has a problem who is going to be homeless, without a doubt, is going to be homeless unless he can come up with this money. And we're giving up on him because it doesn't make sense as a wholesale deal, only because we don't have other options in our tool belt, right? So we have the other option of, hey, let me present this to you. What if, what if I can find somebody to come in here? We can partner up. We can, we can probably even um, be able to purchase this property. Um, and even give you a little bit of extra money to help clean some things up and probably maybe, maybe even be able to fix a couple of the things in the house. And then you don't even have to leave the house. He's gonna be like, what? How is that possible? Well, this is called a seller leaseback or a seller buyback, depending on what the end investor wants to do, right? Seller buyback, obviously they're buying back the home. They're holding the note on the mortgage, the, the investor is, and they're the, the tenant or the, um, well, the, the previous owner is pretty much mortgaging, paying them a mortgage, right? That's the buyback portion. Or you could just do a leaseback where it's just leasing it, but they have guaranteed right of refusal, right? So these are options that you can present to them that probably has never been presented to them before. And if it makes sense, if, I don't know what it is, I don't know what his mortgage is. Um, if, his mor if his mortgage is $700 a month, right? And the average rent in that particular neighborhood is going for 950. Maybe you say, listen, man, average rent for this size house is 950. If we work this thing out, we could probably do this for, you know, somewhere between 900 to 925. So you're doing paying less than mortgage. I mean, less than going rent because let's just face it, Mr. Seller, no matter how sick you are, no matter what's going on in your life, the government doesn't care. 
if you don't take care of these back taxes, if you don't catch up on this mortgage, your house is gone and you're out in the street and you're gonna have to pay rent anyway. Why go somewhere else and pay rent at 950 to $1,000 when you can stay right here in the home that you want and you love for 900, 925? It's a win-win situation. Sign right here, right? Because we present a real solution, right? To a real problem, we can, we can help this guy. Make sense? Okay, cool. I, I don't know if you're, um, okay. No, I, I hear you. Yeah, I'm muting myself. I'm sorry. I'm in the middle of no, work, cool. but hey, well, I, um, I wrote down what you said. I'm going to do a little more research into buyback, um, um, buyback and, um, uh, and everything. Um, yeah. and, uh, hopefully approach them. It, now that you said that I'm gonna do more research. I was thinking about tomorrow, but I probably hold it off to like Monday, Tuesday. Just do a little Yo, more research, get some more money, things together. Money, money like speed, man. You missed that part, apparently. So you, like yeah, I heard, no, I heard that part. So you think I should approach him faster than that? I think you need I to I want to make sure I don't scare him away. No, I think, I think you need, because somebody like me is going to see that same house and I'm not going to wait. There's somebody yeah. out in your market that's aggressive. There's somebody out in your market that wants, yeah. wants a better life more than you want it. Right? Yeah. I'm just being real with yeah. you, right? So. No, I hear you. I hear you 100%. No, no. Why wait? What's the difference? Uh -huh. Go research it tonight, right? I know you. I know you at work. Yep. When you do work, who 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 cares? Sleep is sleep, right? You can get sleep next year. Yeah, exactly. So research it tonight, and then approach them tomorrow. Why wait? Sounds good. Yeah. Let's get it. Let's get it. Understand. Yeah, man. Let's make money. Let's, 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 no problem, man. Let's make some money, guys. Let's 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 do this. Let's let's do what we, we want to do for our families, right? Uh. I think uh, I think I don't I can't remember who was first. Uh, I'm gonna go. Uh, uh, let's see, let me lower your hand. I say Mo, Milan, right? Milan, Malone. My bad, man. Mullen. I'm sorry. Say it again. <laughs> it's Molin. Molin, Molin. I was trying to throw, throw, throw some French stuff in Milan and Milan. I was trying to. I answer to man. I answer to it all. I get called a little bit of everything. <laughs> <laughs> What's good, man? So uh, I actually have two questions. So the first one is like, I've been doing like a lot of uh, driving for dollars and um, I've come up on a couple of properties that are in trust. Okay. How do, how do we figure out who to contact in, in the trust? What I've been doing is just sending them the uh, deal machine postcard so far. Yeah. Molin, um, I told you my, my, my time is worth a thousand dollars an hour, right? Mm -hmm. and I'm trying to work. I need, to, I, need to, I need to do a lot more work on myself, but eventually I'm gonna go to 2,000, eventually be $5,000 an hour, right? I am not wasting $1,000. That's how I look at it, on trying to find a trust, because the whole point of setting up a trust is to make it next to impossible for you to find it, right? That's the point of the trust, Yeah. right? Is to hide who owns the property, right? Nine times out of 10, man, 9.99% times out of 10, you're going to spend so much time trying to find the owner of the trust that you could have found 10 other deals by then. Right. Okay. So I'm not saying that there's not a way there is a way, but it's very, 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 very time consuming. Essentially what you have to do just to answer your question, essentially what you have to do is because the trust is listed. When you go to look up um, who the owner is, there should be a trustee. Now that trustee job, their whole job is to not let you know who is in the trust. So now you have to look through the, all the trusts that are filed. In, what state are you in? I'm in Florida. Florida. So you have to look through all the trusts that go through Florida. All of them. Right? This is why people set up trusts. This is why when someone says, okay, this trust owns this particular property and someone wants to sue them, right? It's very, very difficult to find them because it's very, it's very, it's, it's actually not really difficult. It's just very expensive to find them because yeah. you got to pay most of the time you're paying a lawyer to do all this research and they got to go through all of them through Florida. Right. I just, I just, move on, man, I just go to the next one to be honest with you. Okay. So I, um, I was with Sherry when we were doing driving for dollars on Monday in, um, in South Carolina and we came across the trust and it had an address. And that would be, be about my extent. If, I, if I'm doing deal machine and I see the address, I take a picture, I'll send the postcard, I'll let the postcard do the work. If they contact me, they do. If they don't, I keep it moving. That's, that's as far okay. as I'm with it, really. Okay, cool. Yeah. Okay, cool, man. Okay, second question, second question. Oh, okay, go okay. ahead. So I'm talking with this lady who has a FISBO. Okay. Uh, she is a... Uh, 
her husband died, uh, then her siblings got divorced, all this stuff. She's just looking to downside. So I'm looking at the comps in her neighborhood, and there are like, it's like a really, really big range as far as the comps go. Like the lowest is 236, and then the highest is 434, and they're all like within like a half mile okay. of each other. Like the, the one that went for 236, I looked at it on Zillow, and it looks like it's like just like been like gutted all out. Let's do this. He told me that. Let's huh? do. Let's do this. Let's do this right here. Let's do this live. You don't mind? Put. You don't mind sharing the address? Uh, no, I can share it. Okay, uh, hold on. Hold on. We got, I got you right here, man. We're gonna do it on my computer so everybody can see this thing here. All right. That's what I love about this. We're gonna. We're gonna. We're gonna solve this problem right here tonight. We're not, we're not leaving without getting your problem solved. So, unless my computer doesn't want to work. What's the address? Mm -hmm. cooking something or something going on Antoine um you know I'm gonna call you out I love you though uh, what's, the, man, what's the address okay it's uh 249 Hold on, man. Lincoln Sire one road that's my computer at 249 I'm sorry Lincoln Sire so l-i-n-c-o-l-n-s-h-i-r-e it's all one word Lincoln Sire oh I spell that right? S H I R E. Is that right? Uh huh. Yeah, that's right. That's it. Yep, that's it right there. Okay. So, guys, we're putting the address in. I don't care about this right now. 249, that's cool. We're going to close this out. I need to get my, make sure my, just, just get in the habit of doing this, guys, because I don't know why sometimes Zillow decides to mess up your settings, right? So, make sure we're settings. We're looking for, this is, this is a flix and flip neighborhood. I'm adjust. I'm, I'm, ex just guessing from the price point, right? Fix and flip neighborhood? Uh, yeah. There's okay, a bunch so of people flipping there. So fix and flip neighborhood. So I'm going to be looking for ARV, not ROI. So I'm not messing with this purple dot. I only want yellow dots, All right. I'm going to open up this to any price because this is Zillow. I want to get as much data as possible. Beds, I want to make sure we're on any. This is a house, right? Not a townhouse? Yeah, it's a house. House. So obviously we have checked on house. And we're going to go to more because the last time I did 90 days, I want to go down and give myself a little more room, 60 days, I'm six months, excuse me. And I want to make sure this is on any, 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 any. Boom, 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 boom. We're good. Let me get this out of the way and hit done. Okay. So um, now I can hit this right here. Let me, let me just take a look at my property. It's saying that it's worth 373. We don't really care what this estimate says. I just want to see exactly where this property is. So I'm going to close out right here. This is a four bedroom, three bath, 2,029 square feet. It's right here, okay? It's that white one right here. So I'm just gonna scroll out until it turns into just the map. I don't wanna see 3D stuff, okay? So I'm downstairs. You downstairs, I'm downstairs too. Mm. <laughs> Keep yourself on mute, please. <laughs> so, um, Sorry. No, it's all right, it's all right, we still love you. So we're going to keep an eye on where it's at somewhere around here. So when I scroll out, I just want to keep my eye where that's at. So I'm not looking too far away. So we're somewhere in this. Okay. Now, what you're saying here, guys, listen to what we're saying. You're saying that the price range is from, what did you say, to, to something to up in the fours, there right? Was, yeah, there was one that was 236 that was just sold in, uh, I think it was sold in June. Okay. How, what was the bedroom bath configuration? And was the square for the one that was a four three? Uh, it's actually like right down the street from there. It's two thirty four Lincolnshire, Lincolnshire. Okay. Two and it obviously two thirty four Lincolnshire. Yeah, that just sold for two thirty okay, so, so maybe it's not updated here because Lincolnshire is somewhere around this neighborhood right here, and it's not yeah. okay. So what we got to be mindful of, what we got to be mindful of when we're um, doing this, right? We need to look for our natural and man natural and man made boundaries. Okay, natural and man made boundaries. I read a book a long time ago. I wish I could have remembered the book about um, 
but it was basically talking about how this it is going to apply to anything. But this was really specifically talking about the black community and how governments will segregate or in the past segregated the communities by boundaries. That's why you ever you ever hear the term the other side, the wrong side of the railroad tracks, right? That's where they came from. So they would build boundaries or build communities within boundaries. So once you go over the boundary, there's a completely different price point. All right. This, I've never been there before. Well, actually, I've been to Winter Park before, but this is a major boundary, it looks like. Aloma Avenue is a major boundary. You got this uh, canal, probably, that's a major boundary, or whatever this is, this line here. It's a major boundary. So what I'm trying to do, I'm trying to, is this connected here? I'm trying to find properties that are within my major boundaries, right? So if mm -hmm. you're finding something, especially in Florida, right? Especially in Florida, Arizona, like Nevada, this could be a very, very nice community. It could be a gated community where the prices out here might be $100,000. Inside this little community might be $400,000. Does that make sense? Exactly. So if that's what we're finding, we can't really go off the prices out here of $100,000 if everything inside the community is $400,000. It's not going to add up. Okay, Your appraiser is going to go in there and they're not going to do the same thing. They're going to see what's selling inside of here. So your property, I try to, I got to find it again, make sure I'm in the same spot. Your property is 2,029 square feet. Um, and it's a four bedroom, three bath. And I'm seeing that's right here. You got this one right here. Let's take a look at this one. This is a three bedroom, two bath, 1,523 square feet. I'm going to see when this is sold. It's sold January, I'm sorry, June 27th. I'm going to divide. Yeah square footage by my price point and I'm going to get a price per square foot. Okay. Okay. This is a good, a good comp to have. I would write that one down, get a price per square foot on that particular property. Okay. Now I need to find a couple more. You really only need three, but Rome right here, your house is right here. You got these three right here. All right. Okay. So let's see what this one is. This is a four bedroom, two bath at 1,745 square feet. Sold in uh, March of 21st, March 21st, 2019, 335. Write this down. Do it right now. 1745. Write down this address. Divided by 335. You're going to get a price per square foot. We just got to find one more, man. We're almost there. We're going to find this thing out right now. Make sure you wrote, you wrote the first one, first one down. The first one was uh, a pen. I'll go back. We can screw I'll that. Go back to it. I'll go back to it. 235. North Rainbow Park. Three bedroom, two bedroom, fifteen. And this one was three thirty one, and that one was fifteen twenty three. Okay, I got them. Now one sold for three hundred thirty, and put down that uh -huh. date. And then this four bedroom, three bath, which is two thousand one hundred. So this is perfect. So you got some that are smaller, some that's kind of close, and you got one that's actually bigger. This is these are this is easy. Mm -hmm. Four bedroom, three bath, exactly what our subject property is. It's about a hundred square feet bigger. Sold for four thirty four. This is uh, be, your, 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 your AR is going to be right on here, right? So yeah. let's take a look. Add those, add those up. You're going to divide it by three. Get an average times it times our subject property times 2,000, whatever. We're done. Right? And we got our ARV and we work backwards from there. Okay. So we're going to say... 335 plus 331 plus 4... 35 equals. What are you, hold on, what are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? I'm adding them up to divide by the square footage, right? So we're going to do, we're going to do, do, put in your calculator right now, um, $380,000. Yeah. Right. And is that, or was that, was that the average? Was 331? Is that what you're saying? Or we... No, I'm, uh, I'm adding it. I just added it. The, I got to add them all three together, right? And then I got to divide by the... No, no. So follow along with me. We're going to put this number in the calculator, the, pr the sales price, $330,000 for, for this address, for 267 North Ranger Boulevard. You want to find the yep. price per square foot divided by okay. 1523 It's going to give me $216.67 per square foot. Okay. Okay. So I think what you're doing is you're, you're adding up all the sales prices, but that would work perfectly if all of the houses were the exact same size. I got you. You're going to get a wrong number if you do it that way. So 
What you okay. want to do for each individual one, find the price per square foot. So write down two, write, just write down $216. Do 216, right, for this 267. Okay. We're going to do okay. this right now. So write down 216. For this one right here, 335,000 um, divided by 1,745. Write down. That one's 192. Write down the last one. Good. The last one is 435 divided by 2168. Uh, $200.64. So just put down $200. Okay. Add up okay. those three and divide that by three and then times it by your, your subject property. Okay. So 192 plus 216 plus 200 divided by three. So I got 203. 203 per, per square, 203,000, I'm sorry, $203 per square foot. Yeah, 203 per square foot. Now times so that, times. go ahead. That's rounding up and then the subject property is 2029. 203 times 2029. So I'm getting 411. Boom, there you go. That's your ARV. All right. We're got back. it. So you can see how we can get a little thing mixed up and throw all the numbers off. Yeah. Just by doing it in the wrong order. Right. So that's a good example. I hope somebody else learned from that. Because somebody else in this group would make make is making that same mistake. And uh, I'm glad you brought that up because we just helped somebody else as well, along with yourself. All right. Thank you. No problem, man. No problem. That's what we're here for. All right. Uh, let me see. Uh, let me see. We suggest that we study again. Billy Jean. Um, oh, they already answered that. Okay, never mind. Uh, Dan Locke is another good guy. Um, um, bum, 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 bum. Um, so, man, uh, something Evans. Uh, he's, he's amazing, too. Um, we say, Tommy, if he cannot afford to pay current mortgage, how is this a good option? Okay, so if he can't pay, afford to pay a good, that's a good question. So Carla said, if he can't afford to pay the current mortgage, what happens, Carla, is this. It's not that, a lot of times what happens is the person can't not afford to pay the mortgage peer, uh, forever. Is that they hit a point in their life where they went through some rough times. And now this guy is four or $5,000 in the hole. And he, can't, he doesn't have four or $5,000 to get out of the hole. He could make the, mo the normal monthly payment now because maybe he recouped, maybe he um, lost his job, but now he got another job. But the job is no, really not no better than the last one. So he doesn't have $5,000 where he can come out of the hole. Make sense? So you have to address that situation. And the uh, individual that's taking over the payment, if this is a good deal, this is a good deal. This, this, I got to, all right, y'all know I, I, I want to help people, right? So, but this is, this way this is going to come out, it's not going to sound, it's not going to sound good, okay? All right, but I'm just being real with you. There comes a point in time in everybody's life, all right, Sharon, Kiki, Don, Danita, everybody, Susie, Carla, we're all going to die, right? I'm just being real. So, this, like I said, it's not going to sound good, but it's the honest truth. There comes a point in time when we're going to die. I find a property. I find a property. He said it's 49000 I have no idea about this neighborhood. I don't know what the properties are going for. There's $49,000 left on this property. And this is an elderly gentleman that is going to get kicked out in the street and probably is maybe not of working age. Maybe he's living off of Social Security. He don't, it's not going to sound right. He only, got, he, he only got a little bit of time left, right? It just is what it is right? We're, we're all going to face it, okay? At some point, we're all going to face this fate, right? It only has but so much time left, so I might think about it and say, you know what? He's normally paying $700. He fell behind, fell on hard times. He's going to get kicked out and be on the street. He's making Social Security right now. He doesn't have the, the, the money, the family to, to move on to a different place. How about, I know I'm getting a good deal here. I'll get this house for $49,000, allow him to pay the same rent. So now I'm not paying the mortgage 
and eventually it's going to happen, right? And if I have enough equity in that house, I might still think about doing it, depending on what the market is. Like I said, I have no idea what the HR, I mean, um, the ARV is for that house. I have no idea, right? But this is what happens with other companies. They call them reverse mortgages. The only difference with this one is that this person, I'm not paying them. But that's what these reverse mortgages companies do. They, they look for elderly people who have property and these people don't have any income. They pay them basically on a monthly basis to take, their, to take over their property so they have some income, knowing that eventually within two, three, five, seven years, they're going to pass away and they're going to be left with this property. But for that individual, it's a good thing for them because they don't have retirement or they don't have any other means. They don't have family, right? I mean, like I said, it don't sound good, but this is, this is, this is just the real, right? If somebody doesn't help this person, he's going to be homeless. So what's better? If you were in that position, do you go homeless or do you stay in the house that you want to stay in, pay the same amount of money that you were already paying, but you know that you go, you're, you're leasing this property now. And eventually when you pass away, it's going to be left to the person who, who dug you out of this hole, right? It just is what it is. Um, sometimes trust trust. Okay, we've got that. Hey, Tommy, I got to run. No problem, Ja. Um, so Sam Ovens, there we go. Sam Ovens. All right. Um, I think that wraps it up. Are we good? No other questions. We got any more questions? Uh, did you put your hand up again? Molin? Uh, I got one more. All right. One more, one more question. Cause I'm hungry. I get hangry. You know what I'm saying? I, I hear you. I hear you. So this is a quick one then. Like cool. we make all this money. What are we, how, how much are we putting aside for taxes? Because death and taxes that, are imminent. Yeah, that is that is that is that is a very good question. So, um, so first of all, disclaimer: I'm not an accountant. All right, so don't try to sue me. All right, go talk <laughs> with you, go go talk with an accountant. All right, but I like to put about thirty percent away. All right, I like to put away thirty percent. If you have a good accountant, you won't spend that much. All right, because you have a lot of tax write-offs. But I like to put about thirty percent away. Um, just in case I can't get a right, these write-offs, right? Put away 30, about 30%. It's also going to allow you, you guys do understand when you get a tax return, you understand what that is. You, you understand how bad it is for you to get a tax return, for you to get money yeah, back. Yeah, I, I just got one from where they were holding yeah. my money for. <laughs> well, listen, when, I'm talking about when they give you, when you get a return, poor people get returns, right? Poor people get returns. So if you're getting a return, from the government, understand what they did. They pimped you. They took your money, they invested it in some foreign exchange program or some other, uh, uh, with some other country, or they, they paid off some debt, or they did something with your marriage, with the taxpayer's money, collected interest off of your money, and then gave you back what they shouldn't have took in the first place. So, I don't want to get a tax return. I'm not trying to get money back. I'm just trying to pay zero taxes, okay? So it's better for me to keep as much as my money as possible um, working for me because that's what Uncle Sam's doing. They're just taking your money, put, um, infusing it into the Fed. They're infusing it into different programs, making earning interest off of your money, and then giving you back 0% on that money that they took from you. This is why it's so much better to be an entrepreneur. This is why it's so much better to control your own money. This is why it's so much better for you to say, you know what, I'm going to make my money work for me and I'll give you back the scraps, yeah. government, right? So if you're getting a tax return, I want you to think about that from now on, all right? All right. Uh, appreciate it, post? No problem, brother. That's what we're here for, man. Can I post today's webinar in the Facebook? It's going to go into the course. It's going to go into the course, all right? All right. Um, I love you guys, but I'm hungry. All right. And um, I want you guys to uh, go out there and kill it. Let's make sure we take this uh, information and actually do something with it. Uh, Sunday, remember, you owe me. You owe me. If you weren't here on last, you weren't, if you weren't here last Sunday, I don't care. You still owe me three. You guys know what I'm talking about. You owe me three. Your family is owed three. Your daughter, your son, owes, you owe them three. I need my three. So bring it to me on Sunday. All right. All right, family, let's go. Let's get it. Let's be great. Peace. Go mob, bro. Go mob. Everybody.